mighty. I hope you'll find me praising your name no matter what comes. I can't count the times I called your name so good and we need a bonus to come in when the sun was shining. I come in right when after the sun starts shining. That was hard to do, hard to do. But good thing I love my job. <laughs> um, so got some announcements. RC Cares coming up uh, tomorrow. And oh, no child care tomorrow. I have to, I have to take that one out. Yeah, no child care. John's in Alabama. That's why I'm up here. Um, World events meeting on the 10th and men's breakfast on the 14th. And then the team leaves for Nicaragua coming up soon, the 17th. And um, Danielle, did you wanna? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, come on. Not as formal on Wednesday. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so we're getting ready to leave for Nicaragua. It's going to be 
an exciting trip. We're going to do a vacation Bible school there. Awesome. And uh, we're also going to build two houses while we're there in 10 days less. Uh, just myself and a few others in the room are going to be able to go, and I'm excited. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to make an announcement for the congregation regarding the trip. Um, so they're, we're going to take bags, of course, and we're going to take supplies in those bags, but we're having some concerns with some custom issues. So instead of asking for supplies to go in our bags, we're asking for donations to be able to buy supplies there to give to the kids. So they start school January 23rd, and which is about a month earlier than expected. But so right as our VBS is ending, they'll be going to school the very next day. So it'd be an awesome thing to donate school supplies to every kid. We're expecting about 300 kids to the VBS. And so we'd like to supply them with markers and pencils and paper and whatever else we can find and buy. And just to give you an idea about like prices between here and there. Like a, a pack of markers, uh, like a tin count was like two dollars and paper was well was two was it two dollars really? That's about two dollars for paper and just to give you an idea, it's a little slightly more expensive there than it is here. But again we're a little worried about customs and our bags and there's a potential that they might be able you know, we have to pay extra to get supplies in, which then wouldn't matter anyways, or even have our bags taken when we get there because of the type of supplies that we're bringing in. So if you would like to donate in any way, um, you can see me, um, you can see Jody, uh, I think Felicia's here, uh, that's a couple people. Ben is kind of leading our team, so you can see any of us for those things. Thank you. Are you, are you still taking clothes? Um, we're still taking stuff, like clothes and stuff like that, but we just, of course, summer stuff, you know. Um, we're just, yeah, okay, yeah. That's exciting, it's an exciting trip. Um, so, also, the Holy Spirit class is starting on the 15th, so 15th at 7 o'clock. And then um, there's a right to life, um, a witness of you life around Monument Square. So they go around Monument Square. Just uh, that's going to be on the 21st if you're interested in that. And then we're going to go bowling on the 27th, Northridge Lanes, that's from seven to nine. Um, and Winter Jam is coming up. So if the uh, kids are interested in going with Justin. Um, the tickets are $30, money is due to Justin by the 18th of January, so he can get those tickets ordered. Um, we've got some save the dates coming up, so there's just a lot going on, a lot going on in our church, that's a great thing, right? Um, okay, so uh, praise reports. So I got one. Yeah. Uh, well, my, I had a car and it like, quit running, you know, and so I took it then. Had it checked out and they said it needed a motor. Oh no. I'm getting a brand new engine for free. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wow, I got to share how you Praise did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 127,000 miles. Wow. 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 Get a new engine in this car for free. That's a God thing right there. Yeah. Here's some more praise reports. What's good going on in your lives? Working when uh, it didn't seem like things were looking good. 
that's an amazing awesome. praise report wow. in a situation like that. That's awesome one. Oh. I'm just thankful for just people that are willing to just step out and serve especially with our with our youth we had these awesome this awesome couple over here um the fabulous taylor who always seems to step up for that kind of stuff just really important give a whole weekend their time their money to just make sure that the kids have an awesome weekend it doesn't go unnoticed we're very grateful right yeah yeah we're very grateful for people that serve with the kids if you don't have a strong children's ministry in your church your church dies we have a great children's ministry here. Anybody else? All right, I'm gonna do some prayer requests. I'm gonna say first just so I don't forget. Um, Cheryl's are both, um, y'all know she had surgery on Friday and her update is she's requesting prayer that she go to the bathroom. Because when she goes to the bathroom, she gets to come home, right? Is that what it, what it is? So that was her prayer request. So. We're praying over that. And she's been her diet's been progressed up, so she's she's on the men. Praise the Lord. All right, sorry, boss. Yes. Uh, my aunt Elizabeth is in the hospital in Columbus. She's got the flu real bad. Um, she's getting better, but she she wanted me to put her on prayer request. Melissa in the hospital with the flu. Okay. Prayer request. Thank you. <laughs> listening to some good Christian music on the radio. Thank you all for keeping it in 
and with support, you know, he's, he lives alone right next door to us. Thank the Lord. The Lord worked that out. But, yeah. All right. Anybody else? All right. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We, I am so grateful we come ha have these opportunities to come together, Lord, and be a church family and to just love on you and love on each other. And, and I am grateful for such an active church, Father, um, that we have so much going on. It took about five hours to do the bulletin today because <laughs> there's so much going on in this church, and that's a blessing, Lord, and we love it. We love it. We love it. Um, Father, I, I am so grateful that you have brought Cheryl through this hard time that she's on the men, Father, and um, I'm just, I'm grateful for all that you've done, Father. We pray over Judy, we pray over Sunshine, um, and Melissa that's in the in for the flu, Father, and you know, I'm not good at remembering them all like John, but you are. You know them all, Lord, and you've got your hand on all of that, and we love you, we love you, Lord, be in our worship, in your precious and holy name, Jesus, amen. Lori, that was an amazing, amazing story. I never thought, you know, you look at that situation and it was death and just not, I just think how anything good could come out of that. But the Lord is working in the good and the bad, and that's just another part of the evidence of God's goodness. All throughout my history. Thank you. 
Lord, we're just going to focus on you and praise you because you are worthy. Thank you that you've given us a place to lay our cares. Hallelujah, Christ 
because you have given us so many promises. Lord, just promises that you'll never leave us, forsake us, that you'll heal us. You'll be there in the good times and in the bad times. Thank you, Father.
has he been faithful to you just think about the times where you thought all was lost when you thought a family was completely ruined and now a family is being healed because of that faithfulness because he's proven himself time and time again that makes us believers in him if you do nothing else just believe and God will do so many things for you. So it's 2023. We need to proclaim a few things over our lives that we're believers, we're mountain movers, we can heal people, and we can do it with God's power. Walk a bit different now. Now that my heart's been found, nothing really feels the same. Hold my head a bit high. If my voice a bit louder, yes, yeah, something inside has changed. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing. preachers in 2023 set our hearts on fire Lord move us in ways that we've never been moved before Father God I love you and I praise you and I just pray that you be with Pastor Mark tonight just let his words be your words we praise your holy name in Jesus name Amen
Body, how you doing? Okay. Not at all. What's up, guys? How you? Hey, man. Long time no see. How you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Same with you, girl. All right. Hey. Uh, church tonight. That's right. Church tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you want me to say? There is a lot of stuff going on here at the church, so I just invite you to be involved. Okay? Don't. Uh, it's January in Ohio. What else are you going to do? Right? So you don't know if it's going to be 60 or you don't know if it's going to be minus 10. But uh, So there's stuff happening here this month. You want to get involved? We're trying to jump back into it now and, hey, get us mixing again. Get the fruit salad mixed in, the nuts and flakes mixed together. Try to get everybody back together again. So just be involved, right? Uh, be involved in your church. If you see something, you want to do it. If you see something, you don't want to do it. So... Okay, just, just come, come. We're not going to charge you. We're not going to, if you need help getting there you, or whatever, just let us know. Dana's brother's funeral is tomorrow down in Sabina near Washington Courthouse. I'm going to go, but I can't leave her banner till like 4.30. So if anybody wants to go with me, my wife's going to do a little puppy deal with a lady in our church. The puppy, they're going to puppy thing. Anyhow, so I'm going to go to the funeral. So if anybody wants to go to Dana's brother's funeral down there, you can jump in with me. Is that okay, Dana? Six o'clock tomorrow. I'll be getting there right at six o'clock, but I'll be there for you, okay? We love you, okay? Sorry about it. Hurts our heart very much. Um, so anybody wants to go, let me know. I'll leave her band about 4.30. Uh, what else? There's a lot. Elder Deacon meeting this this Sunday for the for the big bosses around here. Big bosses need to know their Elder Deacon meeting Sunday after church. Okay, with that we'll pray. Father, we thank you for Carl playing the bass tonight. For Barnaby over there in the front row, Lord, we thank you for Barnaby over there. For each one, Lord, for our friends here, Lord, on the on the right hand side, God, and thank you for them. Pray blessing upon those that are here tonight. I pray, God, that, that your word would not go out void. We know that's the promise you gave us. So, Lord, as we speak your word tonight, let it be powerful and alive and living and, and let it accomplish what it must accomplish in us. We've made efforts tonight, Lord, to come out. So, God, would you meet us, Lord, tonight and uh, move upon us? Thank you for your word. You've preserved it over the generations, the centuries, Lord, um, for us to hear. Pray, God, that we hear it, love it, embrace it, live it, and are changed by it. So meet us right now, Lord. Meet us right now in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to be in Romans for a while. I, I just think we live in a Romans kind of world. That's what I think. Live in a Romans kind of world. So we're just going to sit in Romans here for several weeks and, and uh, see how God speaks to us in that. The first six verses of Romans 1, Paul introduces himself uh, as a bondservant, as a slave basically to Christ. And he's writing a letter to people in Rome where he's not been yet. Okay. Now, I've got maps here I want to show you real quick to get you kind of introduced to, since we're going to be in Romans for a while, um, some maps to introduce you to some of this. Rome, of course, is way up there in Italy. Corinth is in Greece. And what was crazy about that was, especially in the wintertime, ships didn't like to sail, sail in the open Mediterranean, so they stay along the coast. What was particularly interesting about Corinth was, Corinth had a canal, or it has a canal now, but there was a real short distance from this side of the water to this side of the water, and from there to Rome was how ships in the wintertime wanted to sail close to land, so often slaves would carry cargo across this peninsula so ships didn't have to come down and around. So Corinth became a large... Trading in the trading from north to, or from east to west, the the trading that went on there. 
Corinth was a big city. Paul spent 18, in, in Acts 18, Paul spends 18 months in Corinth. And while he was there, he wrote a letter because people were traveling through there to go to Rome. He wrote a letter called Romans to the church in Rome where many of those people he might have influenced when they had passed through Corinth. Does that make sense? So, but a lot of people believe, a lot of people believe that the church began in Rome on the day of Pentecost. There's a list of those people that were in attendance on the day of Pentecost, and some people from Rome were in attendance there in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, and they were filled with the Spirit of God, and they believed the church in Rome was actually began by those folks that were sp filled with the Spirit of God in Acts chapter 2 that went back to Rome and started little house churches. So Paul had heard about that. Paul had sent people through, and he was sending a letter to these Romans about just the basics of faith. And here in the first chapter, he just begins to explain why the world has went so crazy. And it's sad. I, I, uh, well, he, and he, so he introduces himself here like in verse 7. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So obviously he's writing a letter. He's addressing it to those, the saints in Rome. Okay? Um, some more stuff here. Let's just some more information. Um, oh, this is what I was telling you before. On the day of Pentecost here in Jerusalem, every named area here on this map was present here and people were filled with the Spirit of God. What's interesting, so these folks filled with God's power and presence right here in Acts chapter 2 went back into all these places and look at that. They believe that church in Rome began in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost when the Spirit fell. You know, So that's just where churches were planted because those people were in attendance when the Spirit came. Okay, uh, We'll read on here a little bit. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. That's pretty cool, right? They, they're famous, right? Paul was there at Corinth as he wrote this letter. He was hearing good reports of what was coming back from, from the church at Rome. And that word was spreading that, that God was doing something in Rome. I will tell you as I've traveled the world, hey, with Renewed String Church, they're talking about us around the world too, right? So it's just really exciting that, that, that Paul mentions these churches that, that, that are active and their faith is active throughout the world. And we happen to be one of those. For my God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention to you always in my prayers. What's that saying? Paul has a long way of saying something little, right? I'm praying for you. You believe there's people praying for you? I try to pray in the mornings. And what's I, I try to pray the things I know that are issues in the church. I try to pray for people that I know are struggling in the church. And then I just am still. And I try to pray for people as God lays them on my heart. And uh, every now and then you pop up. Right? Deanna, we're praying for you guys. We're praying. They need prayer. Michelle, dang on it. Thinking about you, praying for you. Cheryl Zirkel in the hospital, praying for you. Charity. Jim Sr., you know, are some of the ones that are struggling right now. Is Deb okay, Bill? Better. She's better? Mm -hmm. Judy hasn't been to church. Judy, how many times has Judy missed three or four church services in a row? Rare, rare thing. Carl isn't here tonight. People we think about, people we're praying for. So Paul is saying here, you know, even though he's this apostle and he has this great connection, he's saying, I make mention of you in my prayers. I'm a big believer, you don't have to get it all right. Hey, you just, Lord, remember that dude that sits in the one, two, three, fourth row with a ball hat on? 
Remember that guy? Lord, would you help him? Because he, he needs help. I'm joking, Stephen. I'm just playing. Right? Lord, would you remember one, two, three, four? Would you remember this fourth row right here? These guys right here? We love them. Lord, remember those guys. I, I believe that your prayers make a difference. I really believe prayers make a difference. Paul wouldn't even mention about praying for somebody if he didn't believe their prayers made it. The praying for people makes a difference. Right? Without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul thought praying was pretty important. You know how important praying is? Very important. Right? We probably all beat ourselves up saying, hey, do we pray enough? Are we... Ah. But Paul here, we begin to see some of the... Just in how Paul writes, we begin to see some of the passion of Paul to pray. Making request if by some means now at last my, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. So what's he saying in that verse? I, I kind of shorten some of these Paul verses down, you know. Hey, I'm trying to get to you. I'm trying to get there. I haven't got there yet, but I'm trying to get there. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I'm trying to get to you. Right? I... Uh, there's a boy, let me tell you a story. There's a boy in Peru that Chris Livingston took a lot of interest in, a translator for us. And uh, Chris has done this with, Chris Livingston done this several times with young men in Peru. He'd start to invest in their education. And Chris began, he began to send this boy. He, he was a bright kid. A lot of the translators we have translate for us are really bright young people. He's a married man with a couple of kids. And, and he said he just couldn't make a living driving a motor car. And Pastor Chris said, what do you want to do? He said, I'd like to be a pharmacist. Pastor Chris said, sign up. If you're smart enough to get entered into the school, I'll pay for it. And Pastor Chris, right up till his death... Paid for, in fact, Tina made one more payment to him after Chris died, and he finished school. Really good. Right? And it shows, it's just been amazing. And I'm trying to, sometimes I get in those big long stories and I lose my point. But he needed some money recently to get all his paperwork filed, to get his registration, to get that stuff. And he was writing me saying, Pastor Mark, uh, Tina said she's done paying. Then I need to ask you for the rest of the money. That's what he writes me. And he says, I really need that money in December. I really need it in December. I really need that money in December, Pastor Mark. And he'd write me saying, hey, Pastor Mark, please, please, please. You know? And it just so happened that I was going to be able to go to this wedding in December in Peru. And I wanted it to be a total surprise to him. I, I knew when the date was he needed the money, and we were more than happy to help him with the money to get that all finished. Chris had made the major investment in him. We just had a little bit left at the end to do. But, so I didn't answer him. So all through November, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, have you forgotten me? Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, are you there? Pastor Mark, do you care about me anymore? What have I done? You know, he starts doing, what have I done? What have I said? Hello! He finally starts saying, hello! I'm terrible. I don't answer at all. But that's pretty common for me, so it's nothing different than, you know what I mean, than I would normally do with him. I wouldn't answer him anyhow. Especially if they ask for me for money. A lot of times I don't answer that much at all and pray about it. And anyhow, so I sneak down to Peru, right? He doesn't know I'm coming. Sneak down to Peru. I answer his text. I said, hey, uh, when do you need that money by? He says, I need it like tomorrow. He's thinking I'm in Ohio, you know what I mean? And I said, well, why don't you swing by and get it? He's like, what? And he came, he came by Maggie's house, and I was there, and he said, I didn't know you were going to be here. I said, that's why I haven't answered you for a month. He said, I've been praying for you. I thought something happened to you. I said, that's another reason why I didn't want to answer you. I, I knew you'd pray more. 
But in the big picture, it's this idea of my heart was for him. I had a plan. He didn't know that I was knew the whole time what his date was, what the whole thing was. You know, it's a little bit of torture to do that to somebody. But the truth of the matter was I wanted to surprise him for Christmas and just be present. He didn't know I was coming, you know what I mean? But the idea in this verse is I really want him to come see you. I really am thinking about you. I really do care about you. Paul, what's Paul's trying to say to these guys? I, I, know, I know some of the stuff you're going through. I, I got a note here that, that talks about the church in, the, the, in Rome, the early church in Rome. Listen to some of this. Population. At the time Paul wrote the book of Romans, the total population in the city was about one million people. When I read that, I thought, I had no idea there were a million people in Rome in that day. That's a lot of horses. That's a lot of horses. Manure right there. Uh, this made Rome one of the largest Mediterranean cities in the ancient world, along with Alexandria of Egypt, Antioch of Syria, and Corinth in Greece. Those were the cities that might have had a million people in population. Wow. Politics. Rome was the hub of the Roman Empire, which made it the center of the political and politic and government. Fittingly, the Roman Empires lived in Rome, according, along with the Senate... All that to say ancient Rome had a lot of similarities to modern-day Washington, D.C. And I'm really preaching out of Rome, Romans, because I think it has so much to do with where our country is today. The culture. Rome was relatively wealthy. Several economic classes, slaves, free individuals, Roman officials, nobles... First century Rome was known to be full of all kinds of decadence, immorality, from brutal practices in the arenas to sexual immorality of all kinds. Religion during the first century Rome was heavily influenced by Greek mythology and the practice and the practice of emperor worship known as imperial cult. Thus most inhabitants of Rome were polytheists. They worshiped several different gods. For this reason, Rome continued, or I'm sorry, contained many temples, shrines, and places of worship without a centralized ritual or practice. Most forms of worship were tolerated. Many scholars believe the earliest Roman Christians were exposed to Christianity when visiting Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Small groups of Christ followers gathered regularly in house churches to worship, fellowship, and study scriptures together. For example, Paul mentions a specific house church that was led by a married couple that were converts to Christ named Priscilla and Aquila. Christians proclaimed the unpopular doctrine that there was only one God. And by extension, they refused to worship the emperor or acknowledge him as any kind of deity. Claudius enjoyed capturing Christians and setting them on fire to provide light for his garden at night. The Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans during the early reign of Nero when Christian persecuting was, persecution was just beginning. I don't know where we're going, but I know about everything that has God in it isn't very popular anymore. Right? And Paul's saying, I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you, and as soon as I can get there, I'm coming to see you. His heart, his mind was on them. His prayers were for them. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. Well, that's an interesting thought. Paul knew, hey, that God had called him to something. And Paul knew if he could spend time with something with them, he could impart something to them, right? Now, all of you that have any kind of spiritual gifts, you have the ability to impart things to people, right? You do. We're about to start in a Holy Spirit class here. I baptize in the Spirit. 
have some prophetic gifting in me. You know what I mean? There's moments where God uses us to impart things to people. So people don't want anything to do with that anymore. But it was important to Paul, very important to Paul, that he could get there because he knew he had something that God wanted to give them through him. And I would venture to say here, everybody in this place, you've got something God can impart to people through you. Right? Do you see the girls at communion night? Do you see them girls get up here and teach communion night? You see all them young ladies teach? Wasn't that so good? I said, man, you know, they were a whole lot more exciting than those deacons we get up here. I'll tell you that right now. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. But they, they'd studied and had thought in it and came up. Listen, we have a very exciting church. We have a wonderful group of talent here. You know what I mean? Hey, we ought to be imparting spiritual things to each other. All We ought to be taking the time. Hey, I have a gift. You have a gift. How do I share that gift? Right? Hmm. That you may be established. Now, we've been talking a little bit more about discipleship around here. At some point, we're going to get a full-fledged discipleship program rolling around here. And what that does is mean, hey, you're, you're going to be considered a disciple. You're going to be a follower of Jesus that you might be established in your faith, right? The Lord wants you to be established. And I, uh, what I've seen over the last year or two is a lot of people in our church have, I can just tell, they've established their heart. They're saying, I'm in. And Paul's praying for that. Paul's thinking about that. Paul's saying, hey, I know the whole world's crazy. I know the whole world's crazy. But you've got to establish your heart. You've got to be the person God called you to be. You've got to be anchored in. You've got to be, right? There's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of trouble you can get in, all kinds of temptation, all kinds of this, all kinds of that. The world's gone crazy. But, but you have a gift, and God, hey, wants you to be established in it. Right? Hey, Dana gets up here and that guitar. Not so much this week, but last weekend, man, that tar got loose. Guitar got loose a little bit, didn't it, right? We like to see him walk around with that mouthpiece in his mouth. You know, that saxophone mouth. We like seeing that in his mouth. We like seeing that too, you know. And, and just got a gift. You know how that works, right? And everybody here, and I'm picking, I can, I can talk about Dana because it's Dana. But everybody here has this gift, right? Everybody here has a gift. Deanna came tonight and played piano for us. Thank you, sis. In the middle of what she's walking through. Thanks, sis. Thanks for imparting something. Thanks for giving us something, right? It's pretty exciting. If you look around in your church, Aaron's got tomorrow night, right, Aaron? Tomorrow night, you got something tomorrow night. If you're down and out, right, and you need somebody to talk to, just a group to be in, we got something called RSC Cares. Aaron's going to be here. She makes something. What, what's tomorrow night's menu? Pizza. Okay. John's not around, is he, to watch kids? We're just going to stick them on the wall, Velcro them on the wall, right? Thank God for Velcro. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by mutual faith, both of you and me. Then he's saying that I may be encouraged. The Duns have had us over for dinner. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, right? Matthew, you know you're coming to our house this weekend, man. You know that? Yeah. And the Duns are coming over to our house this weekend. And you know what? That's going to be a blast. It's going to be a hoot, man. That's going to be a hoot. You know Tim plays piano real well? You know Tim? Tim right here plays piano real well? You know Patty's like up there in the, in the cooking list, man. She's up there, you know. She cleans for millionaires. That's, a, that, that's how good a worker she is. Right? Getting, getting interested in knowing Matthew and, and Samantha. And, you know, and we're just going to, hey, we're going to encourage each other together. Right? What, what's not happening in the church like it used to is we used to always get together all the time. We're trying to have more activities. Why? Because we're trying to get, because we want to encourage each other all the time. 
Right there, Bev, sitting right there. Bev, right there. What's your last name? What? Brian, I knew that. Bev Bryant, right there. Listen, if you knew Bev's story, you'd hug on that girl coming in the door and going out. By the way, sis, a whole bunch of beef sticks are going to Nicaragua in a couple weeks, okay? Your work goes on, girl. Your work goes on. Hey, but this whole thing, this whole, this, uh, listen, we live in a world where people can get out on an island, you know? We live in a time where people, I don't know why, people get in this victim mentality or poor pitiful me mentality, and you know what they do? They choose to just not show. Old Olivia gets caught in that sometime. Pick on Olivia right here. She's our next eligible bachelorette right here. Everybody, everybody, be on the lookout. We got to find her a man, okay? We got to find her a man. Good Christian man, okay? Be praying. You hate me for this, don't you? She, she's ready to kill me for this. Right? That girl, listen to me. That girl, when she was in high school, was the bubbliest weirdest, fun, funnest kid on the planet earth. She became an adult, life got hard, and she <laughs> sucked back in her cell. Hey, but she's still that fun-loving, wonderful Olivia that we love, right? So we've been kicking her butt a little bit about getting her involved a little bit more. She's starting to work over at Heritage, the, the granary place. So we're looking for, praying for a young farmer. A long, young, rich farmer. <laughs> hey, hey, name Roy. She, she, she calls everybody Roy, and they say, my name's not Roy. So she calls you Roy, that ought to be your gig here around here, sis. Just call everybody Roy, okay? Hey, 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 hey listen to me. The one person that hates when I talk about him is Diane Hunt right there. Diane, she knew it was coming. Diane works over at the jail. Hey, she is the sweetest gal in this place. Diane, right there in the gray. See her right there? In the, she got her head down right there, shaking her head. Diane right there is one of the sweetest people in this place. Are you looking for a Roy too? Okay, I just wonder. Okay, let's go on. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you, but I was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. So he's saying, hey, I've been trying to come. I'm the debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarian, both the wise and the unwise. So I much, as much as it is... Uh, as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are Rome also. He's trying to say, listen, I've just been bogged down. I'm trying to get to you. Mm. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is that first major verse. Paul begins to say, I I'm not ashamed to tell you about how wonderful my Lord is. I'm not ashamed. Hey, it's the power of salvation, man. It's the thing that changed my life. The Lord changed my life. He, he, and, and he just boastfully says, and I'm not ashamed of what the Lord's doing and what the Lord does. I'm not ashamed to everybody who believes. And if I could just get a floor jack or something and jack you up a little bit, just get you up a little bit. Listen, you ought not be ashamed of the greatness of God and what He does in the lives of people, right? You ought to, listen, man, we ought to think about, when I think of God and how good He is to me, I'd shout, 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 that old song, you know what I mean? God's been so good. Listen, I'm a selfish old sinner that the Lord saved me. Right? And I'm on my way to heaven, brother. And I'm excited about what's ahead. I don't know how many more days I got. don't know how that's going to happen. I don't really care. What I do know is the Lord has great things ahead for me. And, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He's the one who saved me. He's the power of God to change me. And for everybody who believes, it's true. First to the Jew and then to the Greek. For it in righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, 
I think I got that figured out. <laughs> I, I actually like that phrase. God's goodness or God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. You're going, what? And here you are in this journey, in this Christian walk. You know, you get started by going, Lord, thank you for saving me. And the Lord begins to call you to something, right? First real big call I had in my life. Well, the first real big call I had in my life, I started doing a little bit of youth ministry. That was the first big call in my life. Next thing that came along was they asked me to do juvenile jail ministry. Oh, man, the first time I ever went in the jail, it was in, in Springfield to juveniles. And uh, I was in my mid-20s, late-20s, and it was a good time to be pretty effective talking to young people. And God called me into that, and, and we were youth pastoring at a church, and a lot of kids would get out of jail and come to our church. It was amazing. It was wonderful. So from faith to faith, you know, so God reveals his goodness or his righteousness as I take one step, one faith step. God begins to show me how good he is. Then I can take one more faith step into the next thing, right? So I started youth pastoring at our church. I had took another little faith step, you know. I went to Peru for the very first time. I took one more little faith step, you know. Started playing drums in the church I was in. Took one more faith step, right? Started teaching an adult Sunday school class. Took one more faith step. Hey, became the janitor. At one point, a deacon. At one point, a treasurer. Hey, at one point, an elder in the church. And God just showed me his faithfulness. Showed me his goodness, you know? But if I hadn't started taking faith steps... God, I've never seen God's goodness. I've never seen it. I pray that this year, for every single one of us, that we'll be more courageous than we were last year. And when I say courageous, we'll have more faith this year than we had last year to take a step so God will show you His goodness again. Jamie and I are in some, some things right now. God's going to do something amazing because that's what amazing God does, Right? And I don't know how it's going to work out. Jamie, the female in the world, you know, wants to know what the plan is. And I'm saying, hey, here's the plan. We're waiting on God. She's like, we're not very good at that, are we? What's the plan? We're going to wait on God for a minute. We're going to give God some time, you know. Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Because sometimes waiting gets us weary. But I, listen to me. I'm planning this year, if you were to, I'm planning on, you ever play that game? Mother, may I take some, what's the big step? Big old grandma step, and that ain't right. Some big old giant steps. I'm, listen, I'm believing the Lord, hey, for the Lord to give me, by faith, some more giant steps. You know, for us to have some more giant steps. Right? I'm believing what happened in Peru is going to be bigger than it's ever been. And we're going to be right in the middle of that. Right? I believe that God is going to do something in America and it's going to rally people, you know, that there's going to be a latter rain in America. Before the Lord comes, He's going to, he's going to do the greatest things He's ever done. And we're going to take some more steps. That makes sense? And I'm going to be this faith to faith walker. I'm going to walk and I'm going to walk by faith. I don't know how He does it. I, I just know He's going to do it. Jesus in that, uh, Dodie, where is she? What's that latest thing you're watching? Bible thing you're watching. Chosen. In the chosen, he's sitting with disciples in a room, Jesus is. He says, and you're going to go out two by two. And you're going to heal the sick. And you're going to cast out demons. You're going to have power over the enemy. And every one of them go... I'm sitting by idiots. They all look around the room going, us? And some of them come to him privately and say, Lord, how are one come one comes that's a little bit lame and he says, Lord, how am I going to heal the sick? I'm lame. And the Lord, Lord Jesus just says this to him. Hey, you've seen me. Just do what I do. 
And I didn't see Jesus work, but I read about his work. And the and I, only thing I, do I have any power or ability? No, but I can walk faith by faith here. You know, I can take one more step saying, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it through me, but I know you'll do it. Because I know you're a God that, 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 that meets faith with, with miracles. Right? So, so the goodness or the righteousness of God is revealed every time. We take a faith step. Right? He goes on to say, And the just, the just shall live by faith. Huh? Well, those that are living it in Christ Jesus... The ones that are doing justice to the faith, the ones that are really doing, they're going to do it by faith. I challenge you, just go flip over here to Hebrews chapter 11 tonight, you know, or tomorrow, and just start saying, now by faith, they closed the mouth of lions. They subdued kingdoms, you know what I mean? They, they, they took the enemy out with a sword. They, they prayed and watched things change, you know? Faith, by faith they did this, and by faith they did this, and by faith Abraham, by faith Noah, by faith Daniel, by faith the prophets. So I'm going to not be able to do it by faith? No, it's the only way I can do it. And Paul's trying to say to those believers in Rome, you got to take some faith steps. And the message, of course, in these passages is, you got to take some faith steps. Right? So we've equipped your seats tonight with an electronic shock device. I'm joking. Defibrillators, every one of you. Just kidding. Hey, so that you... Barnaby, I don't know what you were doing. You're kind of a strange dude. Last time me and you had a conversation, spiritual conversation, you asked me if I had an old mattress. Right? And I think it's because you were trying to ship a car to Africa. Right? Right? So, so you wanted to shove old mattresses in beside the car because in a container you didn't want them. Did your car go? Did it get there? Then am I going to get my mattress back? <laughs> now, I, I don't want to challenge you too much. But that brother somehow got a car, got a container got a ship, got some old mattresses. <laughs> God bless everyone that takes a faith step, man. God bless you. God bless you tonight if you just... <sighs> right? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth within unrighteousness. And we're living in that misinformation, right? If Paul Poland were here tonight, if I let him stand up, he'd tell you you three hours of how, how everything is twisted. How truth is suppressed. How corruption is rising. One point seven trillion more dollars got approved last week. Inflation is off it's more government spending, it'll push inflation up again. It's the very worst thing for poor people in America. More big government spending. But the more people who can get government money, it causes more people to want bigger government. And the big problem we have in America now is everybody wants something from the government. And the government is running away from God. (laughs) 
Matthew 25, 10 virgins. Five were ready, five were not ready. Some, I think it's a financial collapse happens because five of them run to the other five and say, can we have some of your oil? And they say, we don't have enough for us and you. And when they go off to find oil, the Lord comes. I believe we're on our way to a big financial collapse. The unrighteousness of men that are suppressing the truth is leading to ungodliness headed towards a fall. $31 trillion in debt, and that's not even what we owe. I think uh, the longest time, you know, when we were five or six trillion dollars in debt, every American needed to pay, you know, to catch us up like $200,000, you know? So I'm assuming that we're six times more that now. So every American owes like, to pay that debt, every American is on the hook for like a million plus dollars. Every single American to pay off the debt over a million dollars per person, for, per adult person in America. Maybe it's per person. And the wrath of God is being revealed. Nobody cares about the future of our country. They care about right now. Corruption is growing, increasingly growing. I better not say much more. But that verse is present in America right now. Did they finally elect the Republican leader today? Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. So here's this section of Scripture where people can't deny God because God is everywhere. God has shown Himself to everybody. I, I got them Oculus glasses for Christmas. Some people like them, some people don't. I'm not doing anything bad with them. I've just been all over the world. The other night, New Year's, I was in Dubai watching the fireworks at midnight in Dubai. And I was in London watching fireworks, and I was in Paris watching fireworks. The other day, an elephant attacked me. I was in a canoe. Scared to... I've been, I've been ducking when Shamu splashes me out of the pool. Yeah! But I also was standing on the moon the other day. Just as real as real could be. Hey, I'm looking at the sun from the moon, the craziest thing, and the earth passed between the moon and the sun. And I was standing in an eclipse on the moon. How many of y'all done that? I bet not one, not one of you been on the moon and, and seen an eclipse on the moon. I bet not one, not one of you. Has anybody here done that? See, your pastor's way out there. <laughs> and the only thing I tell you is, the only thing I tell you is, if you've seen the heavens in any way, I don't care if on a clear night you lay, lay down in the back of your pickup truck and look at the sky. There are millions upon millions upon millions upon millions, billions upon billions of, of stars which are actually brighter than and bigger than our sun. By man's calculation, by the time that light gets to your eye, it may have been one, two, ten years the light you see 
left that planet. It's so far away. Because what may be known of God is manifest to them. They can look in the sky. They can see God's order in his greatness. You all know, you all know what the compli most complicated system is on planet Earth? You all know what that is? Anybody know what that is? Most complicated thing on planet Earth is what? What? The human eye. The human eye is the most, it's what may be known or may be seen. God has revealed to them the most complicated system known to man to this very day is the human eye. Just to look out of your eye and see the color and the focus and the beauty and the God makes it known. I was in jail last night and I had kind of a, probably a guy had a little mental issue in the front row and he wanted to raise his hand a bunch and he kept saying, can I ask a question? Well, man, I'm preaching here, brother. But yeah, I'll ask a question. Is God a human? No! Go on a minute, raise his hand. Is heaven and hell for real? Yes! Raise his hand again. Why does God put evil thoughts in my head? Huh? A God is good doesn't put evil thoughts in your head. And the other men in the room started saying... God's good. The guy's in the jail room saying, God's a good God. How, how do they know? So when, they're not, when they're not using and they're sober, they look around and they go, oh, God's everywhere, isn't he? And us believers ought to... You know that person you want to kill every day? You know that person that just drives you crazy? Hey, you ought to see God in them. They're a piece of work. My wife and I are so different, but she's the most amazing thing there is in my life. Drives me crazy. But she's amazing. I could see God in everything. I've seen newborn babies come out, you know what I mean? And looked at their little fingers and their little toes and said, how God do that? So, God, we're talking here in a section where the wrath of God is being revealed. God is showing man who he is, but man is rejecting him. And it's in our culture today. They look all over. They ought to be praising God for everything. why can I just say this to you that's why when we complain God gets so mad at us when we complain God doesn't want us complaining God wants us to be thankful right is Betty here tonight I, Betty says Betty Clevenger you know one I pick on all the time here's what she says I married an alcoholic man had a daughter. And we tried, how many years, Chris, they, were they married? You know? Ten, 10, 11, 12 years? And she said he drank every day and drank every day and drank every day and drank every day. That's what she said. She said, I tried to stay with him until he finally, I think, was unfaithful to her. She divorced. Here's what she said. She said, Mark, Mark, if you ever get a woman in a church that's complaining about their husband and he goes every day to work and he goes to church with them, you bring them to me and I'll tell them to shut up. Amen. It's so easy. And the same way it could be in reverse. I'm not just picking on women, although I 
Never mind. Sometimes we get so focused on when God is so focused on the good and revealing the good to man, he's trying to reveal his goodness to man to you and me. And you know what we do? We get focused on the negative. If God doesn't do one more thing for me the rest of my life, he's done more than enough. But I'm his kid, and he wouldn't do that to me. Right? Because he loves me today, and he loves me tomorrow, and he's trying to reveal himself to me. And, but the world right now doesn't see God in anything. They think man is the way to fix everything. They think government is now God. And we'll just see where that goes. <laughs> and, and we'll pick up this, the rest of this next week. We go into where the world goes when they start rejecting God. How they run into homosexuality. How they run into really bad... When they start rejecting the truth of God, then they run into very sinful, deep, dark places. We'll pick that up next week. Father, we thank you for time together tonight. We have heard the word to walk by faith, faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. And we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And we put all those things together, Lord. Move us in 2023 for the kingdom. Do great things among us, Lord. If you're, Lord, if you're going down 36, don't pass us by, Lord. Let this be a place where your spirit can move and the power of God can rest upon us. We're people of faith. Pray and believe, Lord. And they, they, they meet together and love and encourage each other as the world gets crazier and crazier. Let that be what this church is, Lord. Let that be individually what we are in walking out our faith together. Chasing you, Lord. Chasing you. Chasing you. Chasing you, Lord. May we know you. May we find you. May you do great things and build your kingdom for your glory, Lord, through your church in this place. We give you praise now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. We love you.